Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest is helping divorced people move forward with peace and joy. It was so nice, I've done it twice. She's letting people <laughs> know that divorce is not the end and they can still live their best lives after ending their marriage. Please welcome corporate finance executive and author Ingrid Wolfolk. Thank now, you. Ingrid, I was making light of it, okay? Because know, we know divorce I is a know. very, very difficult time for a lot of people. It is. And you wrote a book called Living After Divorce, 21 Ways to Heal and Move Forward. What was your inspiration for this book? Well, as you mentioned, Trina, it is a very dark time. Mm -hmm. And um, most people would say, well, why did she write a book on divorce? It's because so many people deal with the shame and the guilt of going through that process that mm -hmm. they don't think they can move forward. Yes. And again, I've done it twice mm -hmm. and I've, re I've remarried and I'm living a wonderful life mm -hmm. and I want people to know that the dark time doesn't last. Oh, and if you yes. go through the process of healing internally, people will respect you externally and you'll be able to move forward. Yes. And a lot of people, they just don't know where to turn. Sometimes you can't go to your friends, sometimes you can't go to your family, sometimes it exposes more than you really want other people to know. Yes. So this book was a really great thing for people to go to and get to look inward for themselves. So I think it's a really great thing that you've done. Thank you, by absolutely. the way. And, oh, thank so. you, Mayor. <laughs> you know, and that's but, why I put in the meditations in yes, there also, yes. because it's really a, an opportunity to self-reflect. Exactly. Because, you know, the, the marriages, second marriages have a very high percentage of failure mm -hmm, as well, mm -hmm. and third marriages, 74% um, fail. Oh, this is my last time. Third, third time's a charm. Oh, third time's a charm for yeah, me yeah. as well. So we yes. have that in common. But the reason why is because the first time we don't do the work. Really? What makes you say that? We don't do the internal aspect of working and healing and figuring out the, the role that you played in the demise of the marriage, mm. if any at all. Mm. And so those bad habits and the bad things that happen, you take it into the next relationship or the next marriage. Mm, and then okay. you take it on into the next relationship and the next marriage and you just repeat the cycle and it's never broken until you actually do the work. True. Now, div divorce can be very messy oh, gosh, for some yes. people. So yes. how, how can we declutter ourselves from a lot of this mess with divorce? You can really just start to redefine who you are, mm. figure out what your, new, what your image is and what, who you want to be. Um, your interests, what do you like? Oftentimes we become who our husbands are and, yeah. and we take on their, their attitudes and their mm -hmm. personalities. <laughs> and so when you come out of that, it's like, oh my God, who am I? What do I like? Well, what do I like to eat? And so you figure out those things and really get intimate with yourself. Well, so, sometimes, you know, you get divorced and then you become depressed. And then you don't know what to do because maybe he took over the finances. And then what do you do to just get yourself back on track? Because I know after my second divorce, I got really depressed for a second. So how do you just kind of get to back to yourself again? Well, I talk about in my book, it's and it's really tough in the beginning. Like, it's really tough. But you have to first isolate yourself mm. and really figure out who's for you and who's not for you. Because during that process, I lost a lot of friends. Mm. And I lost friends because we had married friends. Okay. And so people choose sides. They do. And they, they, do. they choose sides. And that's just the reality of it. So, and then you take a step back and say, I have to rebuild my network. I went from two incomes to one. Talk about living half, right? Yeah. So that doesn't mean that they said <laughs> that not taking half, but you lost half. Yes, yes. And so what do you do about that? And so I developed even a worksheet to say, okay, how do I include child support? What's my income? Oh my God, I need another stream of income because I'm, I'm, there's a hole in my finances. What do I do with that? And so you really start again to look at yourself and say, I can do this, mm -hmm. but I have to figure out what am I going to do next? Speaking of what to do next, a lot of people need to understand and realize there are different phases that you go through when you have a divorce and when you go through a divorce. Now, you go through the, the, the angry phase, you know, mm -hmm. phase one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, nineteen thousand. Okay? And, one and of, on. Yes, and <laughs> on. But there's time and then there's healing. And there's a lot of people that don't think that you can get along with your ex after a divorce. <laughs> I was one of those people who could get along with my ex after a divorce. But what say you? with getting along with your divorce. 
get, get along with your ex after divorce? I say in the beginning it's tough for everybody mm -hmm. because there's a reason why you got divorced. Yes. And nobody likes anybody at that point. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that you have to, especially when there are kids involved. I believe that you may not become friends, but you can coexist peacefully mm -hmm. and you can do it in a respectful way and do it in a manner that eventually you can become friends and it makes our children so much better because they see the two people that they love the most in the world actually getting along. Well, and speaking of that, when, when you have children, tell us about the importance of even if you don't get along, not <laughs> speaking negatively oh my goodness. about your past spouse. And I hear that all the time. And you get caught up in the moment. And that's why I say, think before you speak, right? Sometimes saying nothing is the best thing you mm -hmm, can do. Mm -hmm. But just really be mindful of your children hear everything. Mm -hmm. And they feed off of your emotions. And sometimes you don't think they're listening when they are. Mm -hmm. And you don't think they understand when they do. They do. And so you want to make sure that you're mindful of your words, but also having a discussion with your family. Yes. Because sometimes it may not be you that say the negative things about the spouse or a his, it's the family that have the discussions around the kids that they hear. Now, real quick, you have virtual courses as well. I do. Yes, tell us I about do. that. Real the quick, first course, seconds. yeah, the first course is redefine who you are. Mm -hmm. That's when you are first married, and then um, discover who you are once you've gone through the process and you're ready to become that new person. All right, so you guys need to keep up with Ingrid. So we thank you so much for all this thank wonderful you. information because we all need it. Be sure to keep up with Ingrid by visiting livingafterdivorce2.com.